Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're here on the Minnesota Millennial Farmer map by Mapper's Paradise. And we're going to be taking a look at the main farm silo system today. A lot of changes have been made to this silo system since I put out my other tutorial uh, on the original version of this map. And so I thought it would be a good idea to just do a quick tutorial video that shows off how they work, including all of the updates that have been made to uh, the silo system since the map was originally released, and go from there. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The first thing that I want to cover, if we jump into the PDA here, is the silo capacity. So um, I am using the unit convert mod here, so you're going to see everything listed in bushels. Um, I will try to remember to post the uh, leaders on the screen here somewhere up here probably uh, when I'm editing this video. However, uh, the capacity on these bins has been increased to over 250,000 bushels. And this uh, closely represents what these bins would actually be able to hold in real life. And then the uh, silo other capacity that you see here. Uh, this is actually uh, going to represent our wet bin capacity on the map. And so if you're not familiar with the uh, Minnesota Millennial Farmers uh, silo bin setup here, this bin on the right hand side here, the smaller one, this represents uh, where wet corn is stored typically uh, in his setup. And so uh, you put all of your wet corn in here and then uh, it gets pumped back out and into the leg and can be sent over into the grain dryer. And so we're gonna demonstrate how that works on this map here uh, over the course of this video. But I just wanted to highlight that there are two different bin capacities. And so when we're talking about them, this top line, your normal owned bin capacity is what will, I will refer to as dry silo storage. And this uh, white line below where it says silos other that's going to be uh, what I refer to as our wet bin capacity. One last thing to mention is that the animal farms uh, silo is no longer being uh, merged with the wet bin capacity. And so that has uh, now been separated so that uh, it doesn't use up your already limited wet bin capacity. So let's dive in and take a look at uh, how uh, this grain leg actually works in the game. And so if I walk over here to this control panel and push F1 to bring up my uh, help menu so I can see the controls, you can see that there's a number of different controls here that uh, we're able to use. Uh, specifically, I'm going to cover, um, well, I'm gonna cover all of these, um, load dry silo and load wet silo, which is keypad one and three respectively. This is how I um, take corn or whatever grain out of my semi, I'm going to load the silo with it. Uh, and then, um, as you might expect, unload dry silo and unload wet silo is how I would take the corn out of either the main capacity or the wet bin capacity and put it back into my semi truck. And so let's start off here by uh, emptying some of the corn out of our semi truck. So the first thing I'm going to do is say load wet silo by pushing keypad three. And you're going to see here that it starts up our auger and the lights come on. And so I'm going to now walk around and jump into my truck here. And I'm going to unload one of these hoppers um, into the wet bin. And so um, you can see that it's dumping there. I could dump either hopper in. This entire area is uh, the unload trigger. Uh, and so that's fairly handy. And you'll notice that this is still running. Um, there is no ability to come and shut it back off. It's on a timer. And um, this timer lasts right about the right amount of time to push the button, get in your truck, and unload both hoppers on one of these uh, pace setter uh, tr type trailers. Now, I only unloaded one hopper here because I want to uh, go ahead and demonstrate unloading into the uh, dry silo as well. Um, and before I do that, I should have shown off that uh, the wet bin capacity here was going up. Uh, if you remember before, I had uh, 
uh, about 1,670, I believe, bushels or maybe 1,700 bushels in here before. Uh, and now we've got uh, 2,555. And so now I'm going to go ahead and unload into the dry silo capacity. And if I run around here and jump back in, I can show that the back hopper can be unloaded as well without moving the truck. And you can see it's going into now the dry uh, silo capacity here. So this is all well and good, uh, getting corn into either the dry or wet bins. Uh, but how do I move the corn from my wet bin into my dry bins uh, and use this uh, grain dryer? And so if we actually come into this shed over here, you're going to see that I have this dryer control panel here. And so I can push F1 to bring up my menu in here. You can see that I have a transfer wet to dry option. And so if I push five on my keypad, I uh, start up that dryer. And now as that starts up, you can hear it running behind me. And then you can see that I have an enter vehicle option. Um, and that's gonna allow me to use this control panel. And so once I push E, I get the option to start filling the grain dryer now. So I'm gonna push R and select what type of corn because the way Farming Simulator works, it has all the different, uh, the wet bin has all of the different options for different grain types. So in our case, we're using corn because that's typically what you would put through the dryer. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select corn and hit start. And then I'm gonna push E to stop using that control panel and come back out here and see that my grain dryer is now running and has a really awesome uh, steam effect uh, from all the wet corn getting dried. Uh, and so this is really cool. If I push escape, I'm gonna see that uh, my wet capacity is being uh, transferred over into my dry capacity here. And so uh, this dryer runs for a specific amount of time. I actually forget off the top of my head right now. And so I will flash that on the screen here when I get into editing. However, um, it is set up in such a way that if I had completely filled up my wet bin capacity, I would likely have to come and run this dryer multiple times uh, to get all of that capacity moved over from the wet bin into the dry bin. And you know this simulates uh, how it works on the real farm where you don't typically let these run unmonitored for long periods of time. Typically someone's around keeping an eye on the grain dryer and the grain bin set up to make sure things are continuing to run appropriately. Uh, and so you're able to run a number of trucks and store them in the wet bin. And then uh, every so often you're gonna have to check your grain dryer and make sure that it's still moving stuff over. And so you can see that that cycle is now ended and we moved the majority of those bushels over into the dry silo, but there's still a little bit in our wet capacity. Um, and so that's pretty cool, um, very much simulating uh, how that whole process would work uh, and uh, giving some cool role play elements to uh, the map. If you wanna use them, they're there. If you don't wanna use them, you can just dump and unload into the dry silo directly. So we've talked about how to put corn into the system or grain in general into the system. Let's take a quick look at how we get it out. And so I'm gonna walk over to this uh, control panel and I'm gonna say unload dry silo by pushing keypad four. And if you accidentally push say keypad one to load dry silo, because you know, in my mind, sometimes I, I'm just glancing and I'm thinking about loading my truck. So I hit the load dry silo instead of the unload. Um, you can have both of those enabled at the same time. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and push R like I normally would. And I'm going to fill this semi up with some corn uh, from this uh, grain leg. And so just like when I was unloading the corn, the, uh, the grain leg and this uh, unload point are on a timer. And so I get a couple of minutes or about a, a little over a minute to uh, fill up the back and then uh, fill up the front. It's timed really well to the amount of time you need to get in the truck and move it and, and put the corn into the trailer. So um, the wet unload works exactly the same way. I'm not gonna take the time to show um, that at this point. 
Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just pull this uh, truck out of the way uh, because we have a couple other trucks set up to demo some things. So that's one way to unload corn out of the uh, silo system. However, we are also able to unload corn from two other points around the back side of these bins. The first point that we have is this yellow auger here. And this works just like a normal unload point would uh, in the base game in that you don't have any fancy uh, silo system, no buttons to push. You can just pull up right under this while you're in the vehicle, press R to unload from the silo into the truck and uh, you'll be good to go. Um, this is going to be really handy when we talk about course play and auto drive here in a minute. And then over here, we've got another unload point. And this one works like the main silo in that if you look at my controls, I have to push the keypad four to turn this on. And then it's going to allow me to start unloading uh, into my trailer after it's been turned on. And so this is, uh, um, again, really cool. Uh, and allows for some different options depending on how and where you want to be loading your semi trucks. So speaking of course play and auto drive, let's go ahead and take a look at one other setting that we kind of skipped over earlier, which is the course play mode uh, that is in the main silo system here. So if you look on the help menu, I've got the keypad two option to turn on course play mode. And so I'm going to push that keypad too, and you'll see that the course play logo shows up above my control panel box. And that is to indicate that now the silo system has been set up for automatic dumping into um, this trigger here. So you no longer have to go over to the silo and set it up to load um, your grain into the silos. You're able to just pull over this and it acts like a normal base game uh, dump trigger. And so if we actually grab that semi that we had unloaded our corn into earlier, I happen to have a auto drive course set up that uh, should allow me to go ahead and dump this corn into the uh, main silo here. And so I've got an auto drive waypoint set up for the pits. And so I'm going to just turn this truck around here real quick and demonstrate that uh, that feature function will actually work. And so we're just going to get it lined up here and go ahead and tell it to deliver that uh, load of corn directly into our um, silo and course play and auto drive are both now set up uh, with the capability of unloading a multi hopper trailer into a grain silo system and so you can see as soon as it hit that first uh, hopper it's going to start unloading and then once that's done unloading he should pull up and dump the uh, other hopper here for us. And so with this feature, we're able to set up the silo system so that if I'm harvesting corn um, out on a field somewhere and I've got a couple of harvesters going and I really don't want to have to drive the truck back to the farm system, I'm still able to dump corn into uh, my silo without a lot of manual effort on my part. So this was a welcome addition to the silo system over the original version. And then as I've already mentioned, the other welcome addition, and I'm jumping in the wrong truck here, is the addition of this uh, yellow auger being set up to be a normal unload point from the uh, silos. Let's say that I want to sell uh, the grain that I have in my silos automatically with uh, course player auto drive. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this with auto drive because I'm going to talk about some of the struggles course play has with one of the cell points on this map towards the end of the video. Um, so I have auto drive here set up and I'm going to go ahead and turn on edit mode just so you can see my auto drive network. 
uh, and I've set up uh, points on the map for both of the cell points uh, for grain as well as the three silo points for unloading grain out of the silo. Um, for the purposes of this, however, um, unload point one, which is where um, what I've called the yellow auger in the back here, is where I can automatically pull grain out of the silo system. And then let's say I want to sell it at Lowry CHS and I'm going to be selling corn. So I've got this all set up. I'm going to get my semi here on the track and I'm going to say go ahead and let's get some grain. And he's going to follow my auto drive network here to go to the unload point. And he, you'll notice that I've swung pretty wide here out into the grass. Um, you know, part of the fun of getting things like auto drive and course play to work is uh, having a nice straight stretch where you can unload into your uh, semi without running into anything. And so you can see as soon as I pull up to the yellow auger here, he starts uh, filling this uh, front hopper. And then as soon as the front hopper is full, he's going to pull forward and start filling that rear hopper. One trick when using uh, something like auto drive or course play is to make sure that your actual point uh, for the unload, which in my case, the, um, you know, the point that you're seeing in front of my truck is far enough forward that you don't get to the point before you um, hit the unload trigger or else your truck might just sit there and not unload uh, because you've already hit the point and it didn't detect that trigger. Um, but as you can see, I've fully filled up uh, this trailer with corn and he's going to drive to the sell point and uh, sell this as you might expect. One thing worth mentioning is that uh, I always disable traffic when using mods like course play and auto drive. Uh, otherwise you are going to most likely run into some issues trying to merge onto this main road as there's quite a few cars that are driving on this at any given time. And I definitely ran into issues with uh, cars smacking into my semi as I was trying to do this. The other thing worth mentioning is there is a train that comes through these tracks. And so um, every once in a blue moon, uh, the semi and the train will intersect if you're uh, selling your corn. Uh, so something to be aware of and just pay attention to. Um, but as you can see, um, the semi is uh, pulling into the uh, cell point here. And so as he uh, pulls over the uh, cell point, he starts dumping that first hopper. It's kind of hard to see here. I guess I can hop out. And then uh, as soon as the first hopper is empty, he's going to pull through, empty the other hopper, and continue on back to the farm. So as you can see, auto drive is uh, working well for selling uh, to the Lowry CHS here, which is uh, the cell point that is off of the map. Um, I'm not going to demo the other cell point as that's a fairly normal setup should work fine. So let's jump back to the farm and grab that other truck and talk about course play. So I'm back up at the farm here. I've got an empty truck at the unload point. And so we're going to go ahead and record a course play course here real quick so that I can demonstrate the issues with using course play specifically for the out of map boundary areas. If you wanted to set up a course play course to go from here over to the grain buyer cell point, you're not gonna have any problems. It's gonna work like you expect and would normally do. However, then we wanna show off what's gonna happen when we try to use it to come up to the Lowry CHS here. And so let's go ahead and um, we're all lined up here at our point. You can see I could load corn right now if I wanted to. Uh, in fact, I'm going to put just a little bit in there just to uh, have something to work with. And I'm going to say start course recording. And then as always with course play, I'm going to drive straight ahead until I get that first point. Um, and that also gets me set up to be able to uh, load into that rear hopper. 
and then I'm gonna go ahead and just record a course here and I see that I've got my friend coming back in at the same time so we're gonna try and avoid hitting him and we're gonna run down here to the uh, cell point so you can see here as I come up to the map edge right over this intersection boom all of a sudden my little dots for the waypoints are no longer there now uh, if you're like me the first thing you did was uh, stop recording and try to figure out why you're not recording waypoints anymore um, you're actually still recording them and so they just show up somewhere way beneath the uh, world here and course play is sort of able to handle that and so I'm gonna be driving more towards the middle of these roads for the uh, remainder of my recording here and you'll see why when we go back to redrive this course here um, but you can see down in the bottom uh, there that I'm still creating waypoints And so I'm just going to do the off map part of this course. And then I'll show you how um, this actually drives and why you're not going to be able to really leverage course play very effectively outside of the map boundaries. Um, and then talk about, you know, what you can do, um, even though it's not necessarily optimal. And you can see here, as soon as I come back onto the map, the waypoints start showing up correctly. So we've recorded the course. We're back up here at our start point. I'm gonna go ahead and say first waypoint, drive. This guy should uh, come up here and fill the truck as you might expect. Um, I've already got this set up uh, because I was in this truck before um, with a fill type for corn. Um, you do have to do this if you're trying to unload from a silo system that has multiple options available. Um, and so I told it I wanted corn because that's what we've got for our demo. And he should automatically start driving on here as soon as he's got both hoppers full. And so we'll follow him back up to the map edge here and talk about why he starts misbehaving. So you'll notice as soon as he passes over the map boundary, he starts weaving left and right uh, wildly. And this is, he's trying to find his way to those waypoints, but they're so far below him that uh, it, it just doesn't work very well. Um, and this is gonna work even worse when my auto drive guy comes and crashes into me. So I'm back in the warrior here he is still on his course play course and you can see he's just doing this weaving back and forth thing trying to find um, the waypoints below him and he, for the most part he does an okay job of driving when it comes to driving on the roads um, you know he, he's obviously going a bit slower than he normally would but he can navigate up here and so if you wanted to create a course play course to go to the store for moving equipment or to bring it up here into the yard um, that's going to work out okay for you you're going to be able to get that to work the struggle that you run into is when you try to get the semi to go through this um, cell point he gets up on this ramp and then i don't know if it's the angle that he's on or um, that he's that much further away from those waypoints uh, but the semi is just not able to find the waypoints effectively uh, going up this ramp you know and if you let him run here for a while it's just gonna it's a mess um, he's trying to turn around super tight he's jackknifing the semi like we're gonna have to stop him he's just gonna get stuck um, I have tried a number of different things. You know, I've come in from the other side of the cell point. Um, I have a little bit more success with that um, because you get a little bit longer of a ramp on that side and a straight um, 
a straight run into it. Uh, however, I've never been able to successfully get a course play um, driven truck to go through this structure. Um, and the reasoning is, is because course play does not work outside of the map boundaries very well. And so there is no course play course that I'm going to be able to define that's going to allow me to get this truck to come in uh, through one of these entrances and um, exit the other side successfully. So the workaround or, you know, the, you know, not really a workaround, but you could create a course to bring it up here and just you know, have the endpoint be in this yard, manually unload it, and then have a course that takes it back to the farm. That's going to work fine. Um, but if you want to be able to fully automate the sell process to the Lowry CHS, you're not going to be able to do that with course play. Um, with this sell point being outside of the map boundaries, you are going to need to use um, auto drive or do it manually. And so that's going to wrap up our tutorial on the silo system on the Minnesota Millennial Farmer map. Uh, hopefully you have found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments about things that I didn't cover in this tutorial, uh, please leave a comment below. I try to get back to everybody that comments on my videos, and I'd be happy to try and answer any questions that you have about the uh, silo system or the map in general. I've got a couple hundred hours into this map at this point, so if I don't know the answer to your question, uh, I will certainly reach out to uh, Mappers Paradise and see what we can do to uh, get your questions answered. With that, that's all for today. Kettered, out.